okay, I will still give them the benefit of the doubt because, like, I can't imagine like an ESG co- investor coming in. No, 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 remove all those tits, remove all those tits, remove all, take take down Nikkei. We're not, we're not gonna do those anymore. I can't imagine how stupid of an investor you have to be to do that. Like, do you not understand how shift up made <laughs> made their money? So it might that's those are my two cents. Like, do I do I believe that um they're gonna go woke and censor everything? I don't think so, at least not yet. But at the same time, I understand people that do, given what's hap- what's going on with all the other studios. So mm. that, that's my basically summarized two cents. Okay. So for me, uh I'm I'm worried that they they're gonna mess up Nikkei and they're going to mess up Stellar Blade 2 because we know that we're they're gonna be getting we're gonna be getting a sequel for sure. Right. Mm-hmm. And any game that comes out moving forward from Shift Up, I have a feeling that it might be really, really bad. So I do want to read this article right over here. It comes from IGN. Right over here. Stellar Blade Dev Shift Up goes public and raises a whopping $320 million. Right. So this is a lot of money for them. And I think that they're going to be like, oh, how do we get more of this money? Right. How do we get more of this money? You know, because um, I'm not sure how well Nikkei is doing for them right now, right? Compared to other gotchas. But the thing is, uh, Stellar Blade made them, what, sold the, they sold over a million units. So that's a lot. And the thing is that uh, a lot, you know, it, it got a, what, Metacritic was one of the high, it gave it one of the highest. It's like 9.2 or 9.3 or something like that. It was like really, really high. And the fact that you have a lot of people talking about it, a lot of people have it, you know, and I, you know, I, for one, I double dipped and bought it twice. So, mm-hmm. And I think a lot of people did too. But the, th- the fact that now you have them going public, like it might be really, really bad for the game. So uh, let's go ahead and read this article right over here. Shift Up Corporation, the South Korean developer behind PlayStation 5 exclusive Stellar Blade, has raised 435 billion won, approximately 320 million, uh, in its first day of trade after an initial public offering. According to Bloomberg, that is the largest in the country for a gaming company since 2021 when PUBG maker Crafton Inc. raised $3.8 billion from its own IPO. Shift Up Corporation sold nearly 3.7, sorry, 7.3 million shares at 60,000 won each. There was a demand for 226 times the number of shares available, Bloomberg said. China's Tencent is its second largest holder. So what are your thoughts about Tencent? Owning shift, like owning parts of shift up. Uh okay. On the plus side, it's te- uh, okay. As much as we hate Tencent, I think Tencent manages the companies better than woke Western companies, like companies pushing for DI. Yeah, we know Tencent's gobbling up everything, but at least, right? Tencent hold, holds majority of Riot. So and Riot's doing really well for itself, despite um, canning most of its projects. Their their core, their Valorant, their League of Legends, they're doing really well. So at least that's for me. That's a sign of good faith that they know what made these companies good. So if they are one of the major shareholders from the public offering, then I think I see that more of a good sign than a good than a bad one. So I better for me better ten cent than uh, the Black Rocks, the Vanguards, because. You know they they're in it to make money. They're not in, they're not in it to sending the message. Mm-hmm. So for now, that's how I see it. That could change at any point when they release trailers of their new games, finding out that there's no more tits in it and stuff like that. That that my opinion can definitely change. Yeah, man. So uh, yeah, you're right. I, I think Tencent owns like eighty ish percent. So I think I think maybe eighty six or something like that. And uh, yeah, uh, the thing is that. Have they nerfed a lot of the characters in League? Like, are they less hot? Like, Ari, how many people bought the Ari $500 skin? Right? Like, like, how, like, let, I'm pulling it up. I'm gonna pull it up right now. Um, I, I Ari $500 skin. Yeah, it's, it's crazy, right? Ari got a $500 skin. And the thing is that it's, I believe she's like, Everyone thinks that she's the hottest one, but the thing is that like there are furries out there, and um, 
You know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, you know, kink shame you or anything like that. But the thing is, there's a reason why sex sells, right? Whether or not you're into the whole nine tails thing and stuff like that, right? This is Ari. This is one of the, one of the skins. This is, I don't think this is one, uh, this one is a $500 skin, but this one is one of, I think this is one of the maybe $60, $80 skin. I forgot how much it costs, right? So, uh, but the thing is that none of the characters in Valorant or League have massive titties, right? I'm just putting out that massive titties and massive ass. Like, no, no, none of them have big booty, right? Like, are they going to bring in Shin Jae-yoon to, to do the character um, modeling again? Like, to, to, to pose as the character, right? Are they going to do any of that moving forward? It's just that that's a, that's a shitty part is because... Yes, sex sells, but the thing is, Stellar Blade is a good game. Stellar Blade plays yep. really, really nice. It's just the story is probably the the weakest out of everything. The music is really nice too. So, if they're going to make a part two, are are the characters going to be lesbians and gays now? Right? Are they going to be fat and ugly short characters now? Right? So that's the thing that I'm more worried about is because yeah. that's that was the original attraction for a lot of people for Stellar Blade, is because there's a hot character that I want to play as her, and she has a nice ass. Oh, it just all happens that the game is really, really good. Right? So let's go and continue. The company's success here comes off the back of the launch of Stellar Blade, which has sold more than a million copies and may spawn a sequel as well as a PC version and its popular mobile game, Goddess of Victory Nikkei. Stellar Blade has launched, uh, was launched on April 26th, which took inspiration from Battle Lead, uh, sorry, Alita Battle Angel, 80s and 90s science fiction, and Taxi Driver Strike, according to uh, Kim Hyung Tae. You gotta, you you have to put uh, near Automata in there, man. That's the big, yeah. big like. Oh, oh yeah, how, I've, you've started Replicant, right? So how was it? Yeah, it, 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 I can tell where they got like the music. It's very, very yeah. similar, right? Yeah. That exactly. that play style, you you run for like t five seconds automatically. You start dashing instead, right? I can yep. see all, I see I can see the influence, right? See, it's already enjoyed a handful of post-launch updates, including which uh, added a boss challenge mode, new outfits, and more. In our seven ten uh, review, IGN said Stellar Blade is great in all of its most important ways for an action game. But dull characters, lack luster story, and several frustrating elements of its role-playing game mechanics prevent it from soaring along with the best of the genre. So basically, that's the article. Um, I wouldn't consider it a full-on role-playing, uh, an RPG. But the thing is, um, dull characters, like we call you guys out there, are not these are not dull characters. It's just... The reason, okay, I guarantee you if IGN actually played the game and went through the whole Lily side quest, they wouldn't have called Lily a dull character because they would have been like, oh, Lily's an ally. She's an yeah. LGBTQ. She's an L, right? Yeah. How, how, how do you feel about this? And do you think that they're not going to, do you, do you think that they're going to remove all of the hot girls in Nikkei and make them flat chested? Or um, are, like, how, how do you feel about that? Given that this is Korea, there's a uh, a lot of their money is banking on pretty women compared to let's say the West that's more liberal and it's more open to this sort of DEI thing. Mm. I think for now it's the worst that can the worst that will happen is they'll tone it down. Like they'll there'll still be boobs, but the boobs will be smaller. You know, they're, they're gonna try to strike a balance that meets everyone's preferences. So we can only hope that like DEI is not gonna push them more. No, 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 make it worse, make it uglier, make it make it more inclusive. Yeah. I, I I can only hope that shift up um uh, management that uh will be able to push back. And I really hope that the people who invested money into them, like investing into into their public offering, like you you guys gotta know what made them their money, man. It's like yeah, <laughs> there's no there's no way you're going in there and say, no, make everyone gay, make everyone ugly. It's like yeah, you can't be that stupid. <laughs> I I could be proven wrong, but that's what I think. It's like, you know what you're coming in. You're here to make money. You make you're here for this company because you believe this company makes good games, and they do it through sex. Admittedly, sexualizing their characters, and if that at the end of the day makes money, then that's it. Everybody's happy. 
So, yep. So, yeah. Gray, do you think that if DEI and ESG takes over, it's because we did we did see this thing right over here, right? Right over here. You see, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna zoom in over here. Okay, this is the IR manager. We are seeking a competent IR manager to join Shift Up, a company that is leading the global gaming market and achieving continuous growth together. And if we scroll down right over here, they're looking for a person to lead other team members related tasks such as public dis uh, disclosure of listed companies, committee work, and publication of ESG reports. Yeah, it's like um, what that tells me is they uh, they already got the ESG money. So it's like whenever you do, we commit you. Okay, we'll grant you this money. Uh, you're gonna have, but in exchange, you're gonna have to give us you know reports on a regular basis. So that mm -hmm. tells me they uh, they're already in it. So how much involvement does BlackRock Vanguard have? I do not know. I sincerely hope it's just a passive investment. I really do. So, and all the other investors like Tencent and the investors that legit want to make money are, are big enough to push back against these ESG investors. Yep. Now, let's say if this ESG people went in and they, 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 they took over Shift Up and they got infested with this, with this woke ideology, do you think we'll get this? No, it's it's gonna be gone. Absolutely, it's like I I imagine they're gonna start toning it down. Like they're gonna shrink it a little bit here and there. That that's what I. That's how it's gonna start. All that's right. how it will inevitably start. I believe. Have you have you seen this yet? Uh let's watch it again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Here we go. What's wrong? Do you want to help put some sunscreen on my back? Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, man. See, don't take this away from us. Don't. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. Oh man. <laughs> oh man, what a great look at that great gameplay. Look at that gameplay right there. Top tier gameplay. Have have you seen the full burst yet? Oh, you're gonna be bursting after this. Oh man, perfect poster for Gray's wall. That's true. There you go, Gray. The burst is coming. The big burst. Oh man, dude. Oh man. <laughs> Yep. Oh man, see if if ESG and woke DEI stuff takes over, we're not gonna get that anymore. Right? Yeah. Like we're 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 not gonna get it anymore, man. And I it makes me sad is because I like Nikkei. Nikkei, Nikkei is a great game. And um, you know, they sort of stop you from playing the game because they don't want you to play too much or they want you to spend money or whatever. But the thing is that what draws people to the game are the characters. And then all of a sudden your characters start looking like characters from like Concord or um or even other characters, right? So so I I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna right I'm gonna back up right over here because this is the this is the, the, the juicy moments, <laughs> right? Right. The thing is that if they remove all these characters and put in all ugly fat characters, like no one's gonna come to even check out your game. You're not even gonna get a chance, right? I'm I'm just, I'm gonna pause right over here. You're not even going to get a chance. Is because they're not. You're not gonna. You're not gonna be given a chance. Remember we talked about that that one woke person that made that weird like LGBTQ dating game. Like how? Oh, like no. Did, yeah. 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 Like, no one's going to play that game because all your characters are ugly. None of them are cool. None of them are awesome. They don't do anything cool. And there's, there's nothing unique about those characters, right? Now, if you can draw me in with hot characters like this or characters that I find aesthetically pleasing or cool characters like Dante, you know, Leon Kennedy, for that matter, like, if they look cool. I want to play as those characters. And then your game happens to also be really, really good. That's how you sell a game, man. Right? Like, and the thing is that a shift up is no, they're known for this. They're known for making extremely hot characters, selling them, marketing them. Right. And they're like, oh, why do you want to sexualize your characters? Because do you not like money? Right. 
do you not want money? So, man, it's um, I, I, I really, really hope that it does not change. But the thing is, I'm not going to hold my breath to that. Is because it's ESG. They want that money. They want that BlackRock State Street money, Vanguard money, man. Thanks for checking out this segment of the Project Egg Row podcast. If you like what we do here, please like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and you will know next time when we go live. We do go live every Saturday at 8 p.m. Once again, we are just getting started. Tons of more video to come. Thanks, and we'll see you guys next time.